Welcome to Inside the Summit League. Let's get right to men's basketball. There were four great games over the weekend, including a furious final 15 seconds between Denver and South Dakota State. Well, Denver led this game by five points at halftime. The Pioneers led by 10 with nine minutes to play. Brett Olsen had 16 for Denver. Chris Udofia added 20. And Denver's up by five here with 17 seconds to play. Jordan Dykstra hits that to make it 71-69. Denver's still on top. After a timeout, the Jacks steal the inbounds pass. They get it to Braden Carlson, back to Dykstra. And the Jackrabbits lead it by one. After a Denver foul and two more free throws by Dykstra, South Dakota State up by three. Bryant Rucker buries that at the buzzer, but it's just a two. Dykstra scores the final 14 points, and the Jacks pull it out by a toenail, 74-73. to Close one in Fort Wayne as well on Thursday. The Dons and Omaha. C.J. Carter, one of his six assists. Mike Rostenpour hammers that down. Omaha got a season-high 28 from Justin Simmons. John Carhoff added 19. Omaha led by six at halftime. But Fort Wayne came back in the second half behind two guys coming off the bench. Mo Evans here had 15 points. He hit a three and some big free throws down the stretch. Joe Reed had 20 points and seven rebounds, and Fort Wayne comes back and beats Omaha 86-82. Another close one in Vermillion between South Dakota and North Dakota State. Bison blew out to a big lead. Trayvon Wright had 12 in the first half, and NDSU was up by 11 at halftime. Com uh, Coyotes came back, though. Brandon Boss to Tyler Flack. And the Oats within three at 46-43. And then Boss on a drive to put USD in the lead with about five minutes to play. And the Coyotes are up by five late. But Taylor Braun took over the spin. And in here, he had a couple of those late in the ballgame. Bison go back on top. And the issue was up by three with eight seconds left. Boss blocked there by Chris Kading. Adam Fosby will get a three, but it rims out. And the Coyotes had him on the ropes, but the Bison win it 66 to 63. And the final game on Thursday, Western Illinois at IUPUI. Jags still looking for their first league win. Mitch Patton had 10, but uh, Western big man Michael Ocharobia, a little foul trouble, but he still had 13. Kufu Najee had 14 for IUPUI, and the Jags down by just one at halftime, but Western got it rolling after that. Garrett Covington coming off the screen had 17 points, 9 rebounds. Adam Link came off the bench with 16 for Western Illinois. And the Leatherneck shoot at 52%. They out-rebound IEPY by a dozen, and Western wins it 69-54. We will check this Saturday slate when we come back. Denver knocks off North Dakota State. South Dakota State squeaks by South Dakota. And Steve Forbes is a formidable force for Fort Wayne. This isn't an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes. Real athletes who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. The Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. It's the Grand Falls Casino Resort Half Million Dollar Giveaway. Yeah, a half million. Between now and March 30th, play your favorite games to earn entries. Entries are good for all 13 drawings. Then, be here for the Sunday afternoon drawings for your chance at a half a million bucks. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. 
Back to men's basketball now, and the games from Saturday, starting with the two top dogs in the league going at each other with North Dakota State at Denver. North Dakota State is picked to win the league. Denver is picked to finish second this year, playing each other for just the fifth time ever in this ball game. Taylor Braun had been fighting the flu all week, but he came out and scored 16 in the first half for North Dakota State. Denver, though, led from tip-off to finish. Chris Udofi to Bryant Rucker. Denver up by four at halftime. Denver led by 13, but Lawrence Alexander brought the Bison back. Got him within three with a minute to play. Alexander had 20, but Brett Olson had 19 for Denver. Pioneers made some free throws, and they hang on and win it 67 to 63. We played well. We're four, uh, four and one in our last five games. You know, the team, as I've been watching this play uh, over those five games, has really been coming together. And, We've won games this year, but most of them, when we win, they seem to be double-digit wins, <laughs> even when we're on the road. And what this team, you know, was going through was had to sort of learn, uh, you know, again, right, win a close game. Speaking of close games, South Dakota State at USD on Saturday, and the Jackrabbits had not shot the ball well in the last two trips to the Dakota Dome, but they were offensively ready in this one. Braden Carlson led South Dakota State with 22. Good game for the Coyotes. Casey Kasterbauer off the bench, made three threes. He led South Dakota with 17, and the Coyotes are up by one at halftime. Second half, this is going to get a little chippy. Jordan Dykstra called for a flagrant foul on Trevor Groose, and there was some chest puffing and hard stares. Groose eventually made a couple of free throws, and SDSU led by four. Jack's going a 16-5 to five run, though, after that. They led by 15, but the Coyotes come all the way back, get within two. They get the steal here. But then they give it right back. Jake Biddle would go to the other end, make a couple of free throws, and South Dakota State wins 60, excuse me, 70 to 68 in that one. In Fort Wayne on Saturday, the Dons with a chance to take over first place in the league by themselves. Garrett Covington was good again, though, for Western Illinois. He had 18. Adam Link had 13. But Fort Wayne led by nine at the half, and they held on to get the W. Louis Jacobo made six threes for the Dons. He had 23 points. Steve Forbes inside, he had 18, and the Dons get some stops late in the game. Fort Wayne goes to 6-1 and one in the league with a 77-64 win. We'll hear from head coach Tony Jassick here in a minute. One more game from Saturday, Omaha at IUPUI. Omaha shot at 68% in the first half. They made 6 of 10 threes. Devin Patterson at 15. Uh, Justin Simmons, sweet pass there. The Mavs roll up 55 points in the first half. That's Elijah Ray coming off the IUPUI bench to lead him with 19, but Omaha led by as many as 34 in the second half. They made 12 threes, and uh, the Mavs win this one 99 to 71. So Omaha finishes the first half of the season three and four. You got South Dakota State and Denver now at four and three. The Bison up there at five and two, and Fort Wayne on top with just that one loss in their game on the road at South Dakota so far. We've got Fort Wayne head coach Tony Jasic on the line. 18 wins already for Fort Wayne that ties them for the most ever as a Division One program. And what has been clicking so far for your team this year? I think our team has done a nice job of continuing to improve. Uh, I think we're a pretty unselfish team. And, you know, when you play unselfishly, I think your numbers tend to maybe be a touch inflated uh, as compared to if you were to try and, and, and play some one-on-one -on -one and do things on your own. So I think we have some good players, uh, but, but I think we, we're doing a pretty good job of playing unselfishly. And that has led to us having a pretty successful start here to, uh, to the Summit League schedule. One of the impressive things about your team, Coach, is – Eight guys, eight guys that average between seven and 15 points a game. That's pretty incredible balance, isn't it? And at the end of the day, um, I think our guys know who's going to play. They know what they, they know what their strengths are. And I think our team overall has played, for the most part, now don't get me wrong, we've had some ups and downs, but for the most part, we've pretty much played to our strengths. Well, you told us last year that big man Steve Forbes was going to be a force for you this year. Has he been everything that you expected? Uh, yeah, I think he's done a nice job uh, for, for the most part. But, again, he, he's faced some foul trouble issues uh, because of his size in, in our league. Uh, fortunately for us this weekend, he's going to play against two guys up in the Dakotas that, that will be able to provide some physical resistance. And uh, we should have a couple good matchups. But he does. I think he changes our team when he's on the floor. Uh, you have to make some decisions when, when you're guarding him. And I think he, has, he can score the ball. Uh, on his own, but I also think he's a, he's a pretty gifted passer, and that has led to uh, some some pretty 
good good looks and, and good offense once he once he does kick the ball out from the post. So he's been uh, he's been kind of what we thought, what we hoped, and hopefully he can continue to improve and have a nice finish here this year. When we talk to other teams about your team, Coach, they bring up the word toughness a lot. Have you tried to consciously build that reputation with your team? You know, I think that, that there's something to be said when, when you're at spots like, like ours here You know, at IPFW. You, you, better, you better have some toughness. Um, you better have some unselfishness. And I think our team has, has continued to grow in that area. Uh, we're really going to be tested as we head down the stretch with, with the way the, the schedule has flipped for us. Uh, now we go on the road for five to seven, and if you don't have uh, some toughness, some unselfishness uh, about you, you know, you can, these last seven games can get away from you in a hurry. So something we try to take a little bit of pride in. We, we try to play the game the right way, and, uh, and hopefully, you know, our guys can be rewarded for that here down the stretch. All right, last thing, you talk about the schedule flipping around now and how tough it's going to be to finish on top of the uh, regular season standings. But with the way the league tournament is set up this year, how huge would it be to get that number one seed? Well, I think, uh, obviously, I think it would, be, it would be an advantage playing, you know, having to play two games. I also think that there might be a little bit of some disadvantages and that everybody you play is going to have already played a game. Um, but we were looking at it, and I tell you what, with a, I guess we got a 17 tournament, right, guys? Right. Uh, you look at trying to make travel plans and the way the bracket is set up. It, uh, it's going to be a unique, a unique experience to try to, to try to figure your way through. Because if you finish two or seven, you're going to play on uh, Saturday, I guess. If you finish in the middle, you're going to play on Sunday. If you win it, you're going to play on Monday. So, so just trying to figure out how it's all going to play out and, and go through it for the first time. And I guess probably the only time with Oral Roberts coming back next year will be uh, will be an interesting challenge. All right, thanks to head coach Tony Jasic in Fort Wayne. And when we come back, women's highlights, including a huge game for Fort Wayne's Haley Seibert this weekend. Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students. The league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. These young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Celebrate Valentine's Day with David Cassidy, February 14th at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. The great thing about snowboarding is the adventure. All day long you're finding different ways of doing different things and it's never the same. I don't mind snowboarding alone, but if you've got your friends up there on the mountain and you guys can all cruise down together, it's a really, really fun time. Snowboarding has been really fun and really rewarding for me and I want it to be fun and rewarding for my customers as well. I'm Lindsay McKinstry and I'm one of the snowboard experts at Shields. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Now to women's basketball. So far, the preseason pickers have been right on. South Dakota State in first, IEPUI in second right now. Here are the Thursday games with the Jacks winning at home and the Jags rolling on the road. IEPUI has been great on the road this season. Eight wins in ten games and... They got to the early lead in this one against Western Illinois. Nicole Rogers made three threes in just the first five minutes. 
But Ashley Luke had Western right in it. Western down by one with about five minutes to go in the first half. D.D. Bellamy back the other way. She had three steals, seven assists, and 11 points for the Jaguars. Liz Sketowski led Western Illinois with 14. Her three ties it up at 26 in the first half. But IUPUI won on a 12 0 run to end the half. Uh, Don Luster had 11, and the Jags roll in the second half, win it by 17. In Brookings, league leader South Dakota State taking on Denver and a big game for Paige Bradley. 24 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. Bradley with the assist there to Kaylee Edwards. And Denver led by 6 early, but the Jackrabbits took off. Uh, Steph Pollock had 14. Jacks go from 6 down to up 12 at one point in the first half. Watch this move by Gabby Bover. Excuse me, she had 9. And South Dakota State... Led by five at the break. Second half, more Paige Bradley. Tied her season high with those 24 points and the seven assists, but the Jacks were just steady throughout the ballgame. Megan Wiktoshik had 11, and SDSU goes to 6-0 in league play with a 72-61 win. In Fargo on Thursday, North Dakota State hosting South Dakota. Taya Hemiller was a triple-double-ish threat in this one for the Coyotes. Came close anyway, 15 points, nine rebounds, six assists. Coyotes had a big first half. Nicole Seacamp coming back from that injury. She had 13 points in 20 minutes. NDSU had three starters with 13 points. Marina Whittle had 13. She had seven rebounds, too. Brooke Lamar had 13 points and 10 assists. Player of the week alert for her, but South Dakota scored 46 in the first half. Rachel Contreras had 28, and the Coyotes win 83-70. to and in Omaha on Thursday, the Mavs in Fort Wayne. They each put up 39 in the first half. Sammy Pollock for Omaha had 11 points and 7 rebounds. But Fort Wayne made 15 threes, tied a season high. Haley Seibert has been killing it from long range. She made seven more in this one. She now leads the league in three-pointers made and in three-point percentage at just under 47%. Erica House is right behind Seibert and made threes. Uh, she had 22 in this one for Omaha. But Fort Wayne made a little run early, made a little run late in the second half, and the Dons win 81-71. Well, Fort Wayne could not keep it rolling on Saturday in a close game at Western Illinois, while Brooke Lamar puts up a Larry Bird number in a win for North Dakota State. We'll finish with the women's highlights next. reason, Sanford Health proudly presents Heritage Court at the heart of the Pentagon. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. It's the Grand Falls Casino Resort Half Million Dollar Giveaway. Yeah, a half million. Between now and March 30th, play your favorite games to earn entries. Entries are good for all 13 drawings. Then be here for the Sunday afternoon drawings for your chance at a half a million bucks. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Back to women's hoops. Two great performances on Saturday. Brooke Lamar at North Dakota State and Ashley Luke at Western Illinois. Fort Wayne came into this one at 4-2 and two in the league. Western Illinois at 2-4. and four. Amanda Hyde, a relatively normal 14 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists for Hyde. Ashley Luke averages 19-10. and 10. She had 19 points and 10 rebounds and added six assists for Western Illinois. Liz Skatowski knocked down two more threes, but the Leathernecks were just three of 21 on threes in the ballgame. 
Haley Seibert, meanwhile, three more threes for her. She had 13 in this game to go with her 32-point outburst on Thursday. Good game for Tori Neiman, 13 points, six rebounds for her. And this was a close game. Western up by three with 10 seconds left. Hyde with a shot, but Western hangs on and wins it 68-65. Back to Fargo, North Coast State trying to get a split of the weekend, taking on Denver. Teresa Worth, nine points, 10 rebounds. And the Pioneers led at the half, despite what Brooke Lamar was doing. Lamar at the end of the half, she had a game-high 33 in this one for the Bison. Second half, Allison Janicek working inside Denver, led until about 11 minutes to play. Morena Whittle with an uh, and one there to give the Bison the lead, and they go on and win at 85-79. In Omaha, the Mavs trying to hold down the home floor against IUPUI. That is a tough thing to do. Nevena Markovic inside for the first two of the game, and the Jags just kept going. De'Ara Goss on the break, IUPUI up by 18. Taja Kelly had eight points and eight rebounds for Omaha, an assist there to Sammy Pollock. But IUPUI led by 29 at the half, and the Jags put a 6-1 and one in the league with that win at Omaha. And back to Brookings, South Dakota State looking to stay a game up on IUPUI in the standings. Facing the Coyotes on Sunday afternoon, Steph Stuff, Pollock with two of her 13. But SDSU was jacking threes in this one. They made nine of 18 in the first half. China Stevens, one of their freshmen, hit two of those. The Jacks had 53 on the board by halftime. Rachel Contreras hit a couple from extra long range for USD, but the Coyotes really got knocked out by that first half blitz. Taya He Miller with a nice drive here, but she was held to six points. South Dakota State got 20 points from Megan Watashik. They got 15 more from Gabby Bober, and the Jackrabbits win it 88 to 69. So halfway through, South Dakota State at 7-0 for the first time in their seven seasons in the Summit League. IUPUI with just that one loss so far to South Dakota State, and they will play each other this week, the Jacks and the Jags, uh, in Indianapolis on Saturday. We put the campus spotlight on the arts at IPFW when we come back. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Celebrate Valentine's Day with David Cassidy, February 14th at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes. Real athletes. Who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. This Sanford Sports Complex, a game changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Well, the arts can mean a lot of things on a college campus. Here is what it means at IPFW in our campus spotlight. The IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts brings the arts to the IPFW campus and the Northeast Indiana region with a diverse and exciting schedule of nearly 100 performances, concerts, and exhibitions each year. Offering Indiana University degrees in the arts and music and a Purdue degree in theater. The IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts consists of four departments, the Department of Theater, the Department of Music, 
the Department of Visual Communication and Design and the Department of Fine Arts. Lots of our students have a great opportunity to practice their art form. Our actors are often on stage early in their career as freshmen. Uh, our musicians perform in the ensembles right from the beginning. We have an impressive level of professional faculty who do a great deal of work outside of our university and bring that professional experience back to the classroom. One of the programs we're most excited about here at IPFW is our Sweetwater Music Technology Program, which is a collaboration with the third largest music technology corporation in the world, Sweetwater Sound. Many of their employees, who are world-renowned recording artists, uh, teach on our faculty. Um, and teach audio design, audio recording, producing, etc. And IPFW in 2007 opened a $15 million state of the art music building, which has a state of the art recording studio inside the building that was equipped mainly by Sweetwater Sound. Um, so we teach right in that classroom. Uh, those experts come out from Sweetwater to our campus and teach right inside the recording studio and we're very proud of that. That program has blossomed uh, beyond our dreams and is perhaps pushing us to our limit. We have a fantastic theater department which is with its own building, the Williams Theater. Uh, that's a wonderful thrust proscenium stage seating 290 people. We also have a black box stage. Uh, so for a small program with 50 or 60 majors uh, and six full-time faculty, there's lots of hands-on experience in a really state-of-the-art facility. The largest department in the college is Visual Communication and Design, which offers BFA degree concentrations in graphic design, imaging and photography, and modeling and animation. Students in this department aspire to transform their creative energies into powerful communication vehicles for exciting jobs across the country. Consistently updated Mac labs with the most current software give these students the tools they need to be creative and successful. In fine arts we have uh, three degrees. We offer a BA, uh, a BFA, and a BA in art education. And the BFA is probably the most heavily concentrated in the studio area or if you want to study painting or drawing or printmaking or metals or ceramics or sculpture. Um, our area of art education is very popular. That's where students are trained to go out into the schools and teach. And they're licensed to teach K through 12 in the state of Indiana once, they're completing, once they've completed that uh, degree. The one thing I really am proud of too is the uh, exceptional faculty we have here in the Department of Fine Arts. We all make art, we teach what we love, uh, have very active careers exhibiting. Uh, three of us have galleries in New York City. One has a very successful or uh, well-known gallery in Chicago. Uh, so national, regional, and even international exhibitions are not uncommon for our faculty to be, faculty to be part of and to have their work reviewed and to be in collections uh, across the country. Visit www.ipfw.edu slash VPA to find out more about the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. Our thanks to Bill and everybody at Fort Wayne. Thanks to all of our member schools. We'll see you next week on Inside the Summit League.